Hi, this is Bobby McClellan with the City of LaGrange Garage here to talk to you about a few winter car care tips for your vehicle. I'd like to talk to you today about tire pressure. Tire pressure is very important. It helps you actually get traction with the road as you drive. As the weather gets colder, your tire pressure will decrease, so you need to check it on a regular basis. And to check your tire pressure, all you have to do is get a simple tester like this from any general parts store. They're not very expensive and very simple to use. And to find your specifications for your vehicle, you look inside your driver's door of your vehicle, there's an identification tag here, and it will tell you what the tire pressure should be. You also need to take a look at your tire tread because your tread is what actually grips the road and gives you the traction you need so you don't slide or spin or have a problem or an accident. This right here is a good example of a bad tire. As you see, it's wore down and into the fabric already and there's very little tread on the tire. A good way you can check your tires is to look for the wear indicator bars, like here and here. Once your vehicle tire gets down to those bars, it is time for you to replace your tire. This is a very simple car care tip from the City of LaGrange. These are just general care tips for your vehicle. Please refer to your owner's manual for any vehicle specifications. Hello, welcome to the 2014 edition of Smoke Signals. I'm your host for today's show, Lieutenant Chris Taylor from the LaGrange Fire Department. The topics for today's show concerns the flu season and extreme cold weather. So stay tuned, because you're about to watch Smoke Signals. <laughs> Welcome back. Today we have with us the medical director for the City of LaGrange, Dr. Gary Soto. Dr. Soto, it's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you and glad to be here. And you know, it's always great to talk to you about uh, several topics uh, that may affect the uh, public safety, things that we need to know about, as well as the general public. Uh, today we're going to be talking about some topics concerning the flu season and this cold weather we've been dealing with. But before we get into that, if you could tell us a little bit about you know, how long you been in the medical field and, you know, other things in your background? Well, I graduated medical school in 1980 and uh, pretty much got into emergency medicine for about 20 years. Okay. And I always liked the Grange. I bought a building back in 84 mm -hmm. and opened up an urgent care center on Vernon Street in 1999 and that's what I've been doing, sort of my retirement job. <laughs> okay. And everybody <laughs> got to, at some point, you know, have some kind of retirement job to, That's right. to look forward to. It's a lot, lot less stressful than the emergency room. I can understand that. Now, uh, some very uh, detailed topics that we need to discuss today, uh, especially uh, one topic, the flu season. Um, now, this has been an active season. Uh, how active has this season been so far? Well, it's, it's been probably for our area and, and certainly the area in Alabama, uh, close to us, they've been a, a fair amount of flu, but it's not been consistent. Okay. It, it's sort of hit and miss. It's not like wham, everybody gets it all of a sudden. It's been in spurts in our office. We see, see it sporadically. Right. And that's really not a good thing because the longer it drags out, the more likely you are to get a variant strain in the end, mm -hmm. which means if you took the flu vaccine in September, it probably won't cover you for the next one. Right. Now, since we're talking about the flu season, when actually does the flu season start? Generally, vaccines are issued late August, early September, so it could start anywhere from there to December, February. It just depends on um, how it's transferred. Okay. But for our area, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting because, because of the Kia plants and employees going over there to Korea, you know, all the time and coming back, we're tending to see it show up at different times mm. depending on who is bringing it with them. Right. So it, it could be a new strain brought over in, in March. Mm. 
So it, 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 it's really not, now in our area, it's not really a set time flu season starts. It's just a matter of when it's, when it's noticed. Right, when you pick it up. And we've been picking up flu A, occasional flu B. There has been some H1N1 in the community. Mm -hmm. Now, how has this season been different than previous seasons dealing with, uh, with the flu? For our area, it's been different in that we don't really didn't have a big epidemic. And I'm not sure why that is, because it occurred right before Christmas, we started seeing a good bit, then all of a sudden kids went home, and now we have a little bit here and a little bit there. Um, and a fair amount of people probably got the flu vaccine this year, and I think it worked in most folks. Okay. So they were fairly accurate. And as a general rule, if they come out with the vaccine early, they're probably guessing fairly correctly, but they're still guessing. Now, with the flu, uh, and it's, you, you mentioned about the H1, uh, N5 or yeah. N1, and because uh, I, I know there's so many different strands out yes. there now. So, uh, have there been any deaths that you know of that's been uh, yes, that's, had, that, well, that's been a contributing factor? There have been several deaths in Atlanta, and we've had a couple here in Lagrange, mm. and that's just one of those viruses that you get, and it tends to hit organs, and it's rather an unfortunate event. The vaccine generally does not cover for that. Now, uh, signs and symptoms, uh, and that's a big thing because. You know, uh, some a person may have a, a runny nose or whatever, and they think they may have the flu. But I, I know that there's other things that people need to uh, be mindful of when when you're thinking about uh, someone catching the flu symptoms. So, what are symptoms people need to look for uh, if someone that that may have the flu? Yeah, yeah, generally body aches, chills, fever. Unfortunately, the flu A. It, even in my office, I've had to stop and think, they got the flu, they got a cold. Mm -hmm. It's not been that bad, the flu A. Mm -hmm. And generally, flu A is not going to be as symptomatic as flu B. Okay. Um, so it's been rather difficult at times to decide, do they have the flu? So what I'll do is I just do the flu test. Right. And boom, it pops up positive. I'm like, well, I'm glad I did that because the treatments are different than flu and cold and, and right. bacterial infections. Sinuses. Because, sinuses, uh, it's uh, hard that, to tell. Because I think a lot of people this time of the year develop sinus infections and things right. of that nature. Uh, yeah, it's very prevalent in Georgia. Okay. Now, what are some preventive measures that the general public need to take uh, <clears throat> if they, uh, to prevent from having flu symptoms? Well, number one, probably the flu vaccine. Even if the vaccine turns not to be accurate, it still primes your body to respond to a flu virus. Okay. So it's like gives you a little prevention and less impact from the virus when it hits your body. Mm. That's probably number one. Number two, obviously if somebody has the flu, you avoid them, which is difficult to do when you go to a doctor's office. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it really is. You, mm -hmm. You're sitting in there with people you don't know, and when the flu's not that evident, where they're sitting there looking like, you know, they're about to die, mm -hmm. and the flu A is not like that. So right. they, you could be sitting next to somebody with the flu and not know it. Yeah, and, and you know, a lot of times people may think they have the flu and really don't. It may be just a common cold or maybe exactly. some kind of sinus issue. Right. Uh, but <clears throat> don't second guess it because if you go and get over-the-counter drugs and try to treat what you think might be one thing, it could be something totally different. So you need to consult your doctor as soon as possible to get you know, some tests done to actually find out what's actually going on. Yes, I think that's a reasonable thing to do. Um, people generally have conceptions that are, that are not always accurate. And to assume something could be costly. Exactly. And, and, and even, even as a doctor, I mean, you see so many patients and people with so many different types of... It gets of, hard elements and, yes. and you, you may treat them for this and then they come back and say well this didn't work or or they had some kind of allergic reaction and right. then they had to come back and you know you had to treat them for something else. Yeah even even atypical or walking pneumonia is out there and it has flu-like symptoms mm. to start with and it takes them four or five days to develop the pneumonia phase so they come back and all of a sudden well you got walking pneumonia right. which is treated with a particular type of antibiotic. Right, and speaking of which, it's been years ago now, I actually had walking pneumonia and, and didn't realize what it was. I just knew I was sick, but I didn't have a full case of it. I just had like, you know, a, a that's small why they call touch it, of it. That's why they call it walking pneumonia. You don't right. know you have it. Right. Yeah, it was an epidemic here about five or six years ago. Yeah. A lot of folks were having it. Now, let's, let's say, for instance, if a person, um, 
who has the flu, okay, and then all of a sudden they start feeling better and they don't have some of those symptoms and they start getting out and doing things that they haven't done in a while and then all of a sudden they just get worse again. What do they need to do in those situations? Well, I think it's a reasonable thing to go back to the doctor. Some of these flu vaccines, flus, can affect organs and cause other damage. Mm. And if you have an atypical virus, even an ordinary cold virus can affect your heart, your lungs, uh, much like the H1N1 does. Mm. So if, if you get a relapse, it's not always a relapse. Maybe you have something else going on. Right, right. Um, I had a son and he had some type of upper respiratory and then he started having chest pain and he had viral myocarditis. Wow. wow. So and he went through quite a bit with that. Yeah, and, and, and you could get over one sickness or one virus and then get something else Absolutely. down the road right. that may be similar but may not be the or same thing. Or secondary pneumonias with chronic lung disease smokers and people that have compromised health get secondary pneumonias. Hmm. And it's usually not the virus that gets them, it's the secondary pneumonia. Right. Okay, now, uh, public safety. Um, as a public safety official myself, um, we're exposed to, you know, the general public, uh, especially running medical calls where, you know, people may be ill um, and things of that nature. What are some public, uh, from, a, from a public safety standpoint, uh, what measures do we need to take um, to, uh, to kind of, you know, Prevention. protect protect ourselves. I lost lost words there. <laughs> protect ourselves when we're being exposed to flu-like symptoms in the field. Yeah, uh, it comes back to basics, and most of the plans are in place with the city. You get your Hep, hep A, Hep B vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them get the flu flu shot, mm -hmm. and those are your basic protections. And others, the other protection is if if you think somebody has something, wear a mask, mm -hmm. gloves, which. Mm -hmm most of the medics do and firemen do. Okay. Um, obviously, you're like me. If you're taking care of somebody, you got to be there. Right. So they're going to be inherent risks no matter what. Mm -hmm. But you can minimize those by using, you know, a little bit of sound judgment. Okay. And you said a key thing there, sound judgment, because if we got someone's coughing and sneezing and, you know, may have a fever, those are red flags. Yes. And those are things that we need to take necessary precaution at that point right. because we don't want to say that, okay, they have this or they have that because we're not in a diagnosing business. Right. But at least we know signs and symptoms and we need to go ahead and take that necessary precaution, even if it's not something that we could possibly catch. But, you know, we still need to take those pr protective measures. Right. And, uh, and, I, and I think, uh, you know, we do a good job of that. Um, but, you know, that scenario is always there. Every time we run that call, uh, we're always exposed to something that, you know, we may not be right. aware of. Uh, well, we've talked about uh, a lot of great information concerning the flu season. And, you know, of course, we got another topic that we're going to discuss here uh, after we take a break. So we're going to take a quick break. And uh, when we come back, we'll have more with uh, Dr. Soap here on Smoke City. Why United Way? Because in some way, everyone in our community is touched by your donation to United Way of West Georgia. Yes, everyone. United Way helps 25 local agencies touch thousands of lives, even yours. To cause so many good things to happen, these organizations must have volunteers. Fortunately, more than 2,300 local volunteers are now giving time to the 25 local organizations that United Way of West Georgia helps support. Yes, more than 2,300 volunteers. But more are needed. Please volunteer your time, as well as your financial support. You'll be astonished at what you'll receive in return. Welcome back. Uh, we've been discussing some uh, great information concerning uh, the flu season here with uh, Dr. Soak. 
medical director for the city of LaGrange. And uh, now, uh, Dr. So, we got another very important topic to talk about, and that's extreme cold weather. And yes, we've we had do, our share we? of that yes, this year. Yes, we have. <laughs> um, now, uh, with the extreme cold weather comes illnesses. So what are some illnesses that usually uh, typically occur uh, during this time of the year? With, um, well, obviously with people, when it gets really cold, people get inside, they're more likely to spread illnesses amongst each other, okay. viruses, bacterial infections. Um, and obviously there's, there's an issue with cold weather injury that, per se, mm -hmm. frostbite, right. hypothermia. Older folks are more sus susceptible to hypothermia mm -hmm. and they'll try and conserve heat because of the costs. And that is, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that when you talk about uh, uh, older, older adults. Um, this time of the year when we have extreme cold temperatures and you have you know, some older adults who uh, may stay by themselves. Uh, so I think it's very important uh, for people to go and check on those individuals because like you said, they can't deal with this kind of weather, especially for a long period right. of time. And uh, it's important to make and sure. They, and they're worried about money and conserving costs and will tend to keep the temperature lower than normal and they're more susceptible. Right, exactly. And most of them are on some type of medication. Correct. Uh, so they may have used up their medication, may not be able to get out to go get more medication. So, and then a, a bad situation turns into something worse. Yes. Uh, now, uh, just here in LaGrange, we've seen some uh, I, some some precedented uh, temperatures. Uh, we've gotten down in the yes. single digit. Yes, we we've have. We've been in double digits several occasions, and we've been below freezing a number of days. Yes. Um, now, from an emergency preparedness standpoint, what are some emergency preparedness and prevention tips that can help the general public under these extreme conditions? Well, one is always have a extra heater. Okay. Um, the electric ones now don't put out any carbon monoxide. It, it always helps heat the room a little more. Mm -hmm. um, proper clothing, if you're going to go outside, is important. Mm -hmm. Layered clothing, depending Definitely. on. And it's different for different degrees of temperature. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, and if you're in your vehicle and you're going to go out and you're going to be separated from the house for a while, maybe take a blanket, mm -hmm. something so that if your car breaks down, you have some protection. Okay. Obviously, that's not a common thing in, in Georgia, mm -hmm. but uh, after what went on in Atlanta, that yeah, became that was, an issue. Yeah, that was tough, and it's an eye-opener, not only just in the Atlanta area, and, you know, our hearts and prayers go out to those who, who were stranded, you know, on the highways for so many days and hours and things of that nature. Um, but, you know, <laughs> when you think about it, and the people who live up north, uh, they deal with this, like, like it's an everyday yes. occurrence. Yes. And a lot of people that's lived in the north have moved to the south because the south is like refuge from right. all the snow and the frigid weather that yeah. they have up north. And then here we are dealing with snow mm -hmm. and frigid <laughs> weather here in the south. That's true. And it's like, okay. <clears throat> and, and for some people, they're okay with that because it's mild compared to what they're used to yes. in the northern regions. Um, but emergency preparedness is always something that um, is very important when you're dealing with uh, incidents such as cold weather and, and, and inclement weather that like we've been having here in our area. And we're not out of the, we're not right. out of the woods yet. I mean, you know, winter just started uh, back in December. Yeah. So we still got several months of winter left to go. And, um, you know, but we need to remember emergency preparedness helps us for these type of events. We, it, it, you, can't, you can't put in place things that's going to help you for every situation, Correct. but you got to have something in place. So let's talk about some of those things that they need to have in place, you know, before something like this happens. Well, even something simple as making sure your car does not have a carbon monoxide leak. Mm. If you're sitting in a car for that period of time and you have a carbon monoxide leak, you're not going to know it. Right. You're just right. going to fall asleep. And making a decision when you're in a vehicle and you're in, on the interstate, and you're going to decide, oh, I'm going to go there. You need to decide, can I make it there? Do I have adequate clothing? Mm -hmm. Do the kids have adequate clothing? Mm -hmm. And then if I'm going to be able to get back or not. If the distance is too far, you stay in your vehicle. Right, right. You know, if you can get to an exit and get to a store, that's certainly better than sitting in a car for 10 or 12 hours. 
All right, and if someone is in their home and they are experiencing you know, cold temperatures, um, let's talk about pipes, you know, because I know that's yes. been an issue, people having pipes to bust. You know, what are some things they need to do to protect their pipes and things of that nature? Well, most people are, are, are reactive and not proactive. Mm -hmm. Because you go to Home Depot now, they got all kinds of stuff for it, but that's, they're a few weeks late. Right, right, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, I mean, you, your proper pipe insulation should be done in the off season mm. to prepare for the on season. Mm -hmm. um, even your outside faucets can freeze. Mine froze at the house, couldn't use them. Right, exactly. So those things in itself uh, kind of helps things along the way uh, to keep you from right. having additional expenses. And crank down your car every day when it's freezing. Yes. Crank it every day. Don't let it yeah. sit there three or four days. And heating. Let's say if you got central heat in air in your home and you're using heat thermostats. You know, right. this time of the year, uh, you know, people are using more heat. And, uh, you know, of course, you know, they're going to hate to see those electric bills, but there's, there's nothing you can do about that because right. you got to stay warm. Uh, but like you said, supplemental heating, uh, like your electric uh, heaters, and you want to use those kind of heaters yes. uh, that, that, uh, that are safe. You know, if they, they got tip controls over, so if they fall over, they right. turn off because uh, we don't want to have any fires to occur from the use of a heater and things of that nature. Turn them off when you're, uh, you know, not using them uh, but when you, before you go to bed at night or when you leave home. Right. You don't want to leave your heaters running, um, things of that nature. And uh, having a working smoke alarm in your home so that in the event you do have a fire, uh, you have a, a, a means of being able to get out safely. And we've had a number of fires already this yes. year in the month of January. And... Um, well, people do desperate things when they get desperate. Yes, yes. And, uh, and sound yeah. judgment with older folks sometimes can be a little askew. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that people understand that they need to take those proactive measures to protect themselves uh, during these cold weather environments. And whether in your, you're in your home or in your vehicle, if you're in your vehicle, you know, it may not hurt to always maybe during this time of the year to carry you know, some, some snacks or something with you because, you know, if you're traveling back and forth to work, you don't know if you're going to make it back home right. at the time that you want to make it in the first place, especially if you get stranded. So, you know, take some pro, uh, proactive measures to, to add some other things in your vehicle this time of the year that you normally may not, may not carry with you so that you can take yourself right. flashlights. Uh, they actually makes, have warming blankets that are reflective you can get. They're very mm -hmm. light. Mm -hmm. EMS uses them. Right, yeah. cell phone, cell phone chargers, yeah. uh, an extra battery if you extra need battery, it. Yeah. Uh, you know, just whatever you might need to be able to communicate with other people and and protect yourself until you can get to refuge. Right. Uh, public safety. You know, of course, like I said, we've had a number of fires this year so far, and uh, we've had to deal with extreme uh, cold temperatures. We've had to deal with ice. We've had to deal with snow. Uh, what are some preventive measures that you know we need to take in under in, in, in those situations? Well, I think if you're if you're going to be out in temperatures that are exceedingly low, which we, like we've had lately in fighting a fire, that you need to have sporadic checks, make sure people's hands aren't going numb, because mm -hmm. sometimes the adrenaline will exceed the ability of people to sense what's going on in their bodies. Right. Uh, obviously, the glove you use during the summer may not be as adequate during the winter time if it's freezing maybe glove inserts would be helpful. Right, exactly. Now, and we'll talk about public safety, but we don't want to exclude anyone because we do have city employees that also have to work under, under these conditions too, like your, your street department, utilities, and things of that nature. You know, what would you say to you know, those individuals when they're out Well, it's the same principles teachers? that they have proper clothing mm -hmm. and limit their exposure and check periodically, make sure the toes aren't numb. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and it comes down to basically common sense approach. Right. And looking out for one another. Yes. It's a, it's a team thing. Hey, you, how are your hands feeling? How are your feet feeling? Mm -hmm. They'll sit in the truck a while, warm up. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we talked about the cold weather and what are some coping mechanisms necessary uh, when working under these conditions? Well, make sure you get plenty of rest, plenty mm -hmm. of fluids, mm -hmm. obviously fed well. And, you know, it's interesting during the winter months, people tend to get easy, easier, easily depressed mm -hmm. because there's less sun exposure. So if you're working under constant stress and there's less daylight, you have to worry about people getting depressed, stressed, mm -hmm. sometimes 
getting angry easy and, and acting out. Right, and, and, and with us, you know, when we're out and, like I said, the, the fires and things of that nature we've had so far and, 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 and running medical calls, uh, you know, that, weigh, that weighs on us because, you know, we're already dealing with, you know, cold temperatures and we're trying to provide the, the best service that we can under those extreme conditions and, right. you know, the general public has to understand that, you know, we're doing everything we can, uh, but, you know, there are some limitations when you are having to operate out here in this cold weather. Right, you have priorities. Just like EMS has priorities, fire has priorities. You know, you may not be able to go help Mrs. Jones get back in the bed because you're fighting a fire. Right. And, you know. Just continue to, to, to monitor the situation and do the best you can with what right. you have to work with. It's you. just, again, it comes down to knowing your job and performing your job. Okay. Good. Uh, now, do you have anything um, before we close uh, that you would like to discuss? Any other final words? No, but I think if if people will, again, use sound judgment, particularly with the flu season, mm -hmm. you know, if you're going to get the flu, you're going to get the flu. Right. You know, and, and take your medicine like you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. Don't share your medicine. Don't assume one medicine for you is good for another person. Right. People do that. Sometimes it, it becomes a bad situation. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're not sure, go to the doctor. Okay. Don't second guess, stay at home and, and have a bad outcome. Right, definitely. That has happened in LaGrange. Yeah, and uh, those are some, some great words of wisdom and advice uh, that you shared with us today. And I'd like to take this time to thank you once again for uh, coming out and being on the show with us. And I look, forward to, I look forward to seeing you in the future. This is your first time yes, actually being on Smoke Signals. And, yes, uh, don't, cr don't criticize me too bad. <laughs> so we look forward to, you know, possibly having you again to All talk right. about some other topics, you know, in the future. All right. And I uh, would like to take this time to uh, thank you, our viewers, for watching another segment of Smoke Signals. So think about all the things that we discussed today concerning the flu season as well as cold weather. Uh, and to find out more information, you know, check your local uh, fire departments and your uh, public safety agencies, uh, Facebook. Uh, a lot of information is there. And, uh, and monitor your local news to find out what's going on from a day-to-day -day basis. Until next time. Take care. This is Bobby McCone with the Silly Grange Garage. I'm here to give you another winter car care tip for your vehicle. Now, one thing you do need to check through the winter is your antifreeze. Your antifreeze keeps your vehicle from freezing during the winter. It's supposed to have a proper 50 50 mix between antifreeze and water. Very easy way to check it. One thing you need to look at is your coolant level to see how much antifreeze you have in the vehicle. No, it's going to have a maximum or minimum level on your reservoir and it's going to tell you how much you need to put in it. Another thing you need to check is the actual freezing point of your antifreeze. And you can do that with a simple test that you can get at any parts store. All you do is take the cap off of your radiator reservoir. On this model vehicle, we have a reservoir. Stick it down in and squeeze up your antifreeze into the tester. There will be a needle showing where your antifreeze test level is. And on this vehicle, it's good to negative 45 degrees. Now, you need to have it up to about, about zero degrees. You don't want it to be any higher than zero. If it's anything above zero, you need to flush out and refill your radiator with the proper level and type of antifreeze, and you can check your owner's manual for that. This is just another simple car care tip from the City of LaGrange. These are just general care tips for your vehicle. Please refer to your owner's manual for any vehicle specifications.